So, dudes, I put up a poll asking how much you guys liked Brava, the new gadget thief operator, and the consensus is positive. This video was sponsored by Apex Gaming PCs. I've collaborated with this company to deliver you guys three price ranges of custom-built gaming rigs. With Apex Gaming PCs, you get great build quality and a dedicated support staff that's on call 24-7. One of the things that I get told quite a bit is that Apex Gaming has really good customer service. There is a 10% discount going on site-wide. If all that sounds good to you, check out the link in the description. And thanks again to Apex Gaming for sponsoring this video. You guys had some interesting takes about what her gadget does compared to her peers. We'll get to those later. So I know that Brava can hack Capkin traps and all sorts of goofy stuff to play tricks on the enemy, but I think there's an aspect of her kit that is severely underrealized at the moment. The drone can hack default cameras, and it doesn't leave a queue when it is hacked, so it can give you opportunities to make plays for yourself or your team. In this example, I use the Kludge drone to capture the bar cam for Clubhouse, which helps us out later. Okay. When is billiards? Bathroom now. Bathroom. Nice. When Dakebi hacks a cam, defenders can see that the cameras have been hacked. And the cameras work both ways. When Brava hacks a cam, it gets removed from the observation tools. So you might not necessarily know if the camera has been hacked at all. Don't forget that Dakebi also has to get a pick in order to hack cams, whereas with the Brava drone, you can just send it in, and you can see the entirety of the top floor of Fireplace and below for the main lobby of Chalet. Now you might be thinking this is stuff that Twitch can already do, albeit you can't access the camera, and there are a lot of situations where the defenders will just shoot the cam when they realize that it's hacked. But one thing that Brava can do that Twitch can't do is counter Maestro. Maestro can keep the camera closed up, and then Brava can steal it. Harrow said she's more situational Twitch, but because of that, she's an impactful counterpick against Maestro and Echo and Capkin. I agree. Let's not forget that the yokai can be used to keep the attacker from planting the diffuser. Enchanted Diamond said, while she is a situational pick, the ability to take over cams and gain passive intel for your team isn't something to be ignored. A viewer as a Twitch without the ability to recharge her shots, and that taking over proxies or BP cams is a worthwhile endeavor if nothing else of value can be taken over. That's a really solid point about the beepers. In fact, I think a lot of people are sleeping on that part too. Because if you think about it, a beeper is going to be placed in a spot where the defender is not. The whole point of it is to gather intel passively so that they can react to it. So they're probably not going to suspect a Brava drone capturing it, and in the event it's captured, that gives you information. So it's not a lot of guaranteed value, but there is potential value there. She's also a character that benefits greatly from attacker repick. I've seen some competitive players quite literally swap in between Twitch and Brava depending on gadget setups from the other team. If you can't already tell, you can think of this video like an addendum to the dedicated Brava how-to that's going to come out next week. For now, I want to go through a bunch of different competitive maps and show you places of interest that I think Brava can be useful in. And the dynamic with the default cameras is really interesting to me because they're pre-placed and you can come up with a plan of action before the round even starts. Whereas I think a lot of people were under the impression that Brava was going to be a very reactionary character based on whatever the defenders placed in terms of gadgets. So let me share with y'all a funny interaction. So this camera is so high up that I literally thought you had to jump on top of these vines, which is like a pre-placed drone that I do anyway. There you go, I'm in range. But I want you to look at the green HUD that we have, right? This little tank HUD that we have for Brava's drone. You see those tick markers on the side? So, we go up to this camera. And the closer I am to the camera, right? The white arrows move inward. The further away I go, right? The further away the arrows go as well. So this is a way to gauge how close you are in terms of whether or not you can actually capture a gadget. And as you can see, the range is pretty significant. 10 meters. Meaning, as long as nobody is paying attention, now I have lobby cam. This camera's super useful. We can see Kanto. We can see if somebody's playing in Trump office, running around banana. This can cut off top floor roamers very effectively, as well as anybody sneaking around tellers. There's a vent going into the basement. We can use a Brava drone to steal the elevator camera. Remember, all you have to do is shoot the laser, and then you can run away. So something to consider here, and I know some people are going to say it is, well, Greg, people are just going to camp for my drone and wait for it. That's true, depending on the site. Obviously, if the site is on top floor cafe here, it's going to be pretty difficult for me to send it up the staircase. But if the site is on the second or the first floor, then there's a pretty big advantage in taking control of this heaven default cam. Resources hours. Resources hours. Let's think about that for a second. So the only resource I'm expending to take this camera is one of my three Brava laser shots. 
uh, with every other sort of instance where I want to have intel on this floor, I have to put a default drone. I have to allocate one of my two drones to this situation, which, you know, is fine in most circumstances. But if you can get away with just stealing the cam, now I still have four drones that I can put wherever I want. So not only am I denying the camera just as good as shooting it, but I'm also using it for myself. And in the event a roamer decides to take top floor control again, and then they realize this and shoot the cam, I still have a contingency plan over here. Maybe they're not going to notice it. Now, of course, some people are just going to bring Twitch anyway, and that's totally fine. I have a different outfit because I went out earlier. Twitch is great if the gadgets are not bulletproof. Brava is great if you have a lot of bulletproof utility, like Malusi Wubs, bulletproof cameras, maestro cameras, etc. And sometimes you can get a little bit of leverage out of hacking a yokai. So is Twitch better? Is Brava better? That's probably a question you're wondering about. I think you can get away with playing Brava a lot in Ranked. I think you can get away with playing Twitch a lot in Ranked. Ranked is a lot more loose. You can get away with just relying on your gun skill a lot more. In a competitive environment, there's going to be very specific tasks that you're going to be expected to do. So that's a totally different ball game. However, we can derive certain kinds of methodologies from comp that can work in Ranked. For instance, this is a play that Brava can make. Twitch cannot. Brava goes up to this Malusi Wub and denies a very common Malusi Wub for this hallway next to the dining room. In fact, Malusi Wubs in general are a very common target for Brava and competitive right now, as far as I can tell. And this makes a lot of sense to do. Twitch drones can't zap out Malusi Wubs like this. Brava can make very surgical strikes with certain types of defender utility that would otherwise have to be gotten rid of with something like a Gon 6, with something like an Ash Charge, Zofia Charge, and that exposes you as an operator. With a drone, it's concealed, it's quieter, and it's easier to do. When we look at Brava's pick rate in competitive, we notice that in EUL and in NAL, the stats are pretty similar. Brava has a 14% pick rate in NAL, 17% pick rate in EUL. For some reason, in Australia, sorry, in Australia and in Brazil, she's not on the chart at all. So I guess uh, the Australians and the Brazilians did not buy the new battle pass to play Brava. That's very unfortunate. I thought they would get a little bit of mileage out of her. But what's interesting about these charts is that you know, she's not a crazy high pick, but she, by this logic, is not considered a bad character. We wouldn't consider Capital bad. We wouldn't consider Twitch bad. We wouldn't consider Montang bad. She's kind of a puzzle piece operator, as I've started to call them, where you have a very specific problem that you need to be addressed, and Brava can deal with that. Brava can deal with Maestro cameras, Malusis, and in some situations, she can leverage default cameras with really unexpected flank watches. I don't believe that Brava is an S-tier character. I think if she was released in utility simulator meta that we had back in 2020, she would really be up there. We would be seeing a lot of experimentation in that regard. But as it stands, with attacker repick, we can see situations where, eh, there's not a lot of bulletproof stuff for me to hack. I'm not really going to take advantage of the Brava here. I might as well bring a Twitch. At the same time, and I emphasize this a lot in my tier list, just because a character isn't useful in 100% of scenarios doesn't make them a bad character character. Siege is a game about picking and choosing based off of what the opponent is doing. You gather information and then you react accordingly to it. That philosophy is especially true on the attacker side, whereas with the defenders, they're a lot more reactive to what the attackers are dictating the pace of the round is. Regardless of the competitive mumbo jumbo, I think Brava is going to be a pretty popular character, at least in ranked and in quick match, just because She's fun. She's a three speed. She has a really solid gun. She has a pocket shotgun. And each round is completely different based off of what happens with her gadget and what she can hack. You never really know exactly what's going to happen from round to round. This is just general theory crafting. Like I said, you can think of this video like an addendum to the dedicated Brava how to coming out next week. If you guys learned something, let me know in the comments down below. And thanks for watching. Deuces.